What's going on, guys? We are back again after a little bit of a long layoff because Mr. Headshot Dan here was on a little vacation. But we're back. I'm Rage Quit Pat, and I'm, as I said, I'm joined by uh, Headshot Dan. What's up, Dan? How are you? Uh, what's going on, man? Long time no podcast. How was your uh, vacation? Amsterdam was amazing. <laughs> Very good. I loved it. I see you have a new setup behind you with your pops. Oh, uh, yeah. Your shelf back there. The whole uh, Civil War set. Oh, uh, well, I have to join you. I was thinking of go I have to go to Ikea, actually, and get, you know, I'm running out of room on my dressers here. I'm running out of room in front of me, so I got to, uh, I got to freaking get a shelf of myself. But look what came in the other day. Oh, Very yeah. proud. Did Your you Black get Panther. this one? No, I didn't. I got, I got these guys. It is a uh, Walmart, the Walmart one. This actually was on the Funko Shop. I'm surprised they they put this one on the Funko Shop. I was very happy. I got the uh, Spring Conventions, Rick and Morty's. Yeah, I know you were looking for those. Oh, actually, today, I don't know if it's still live, but the Avengers Infinity War box lunch, Spider-Man with his mask off, Iron Spider. I got it today, so oh, nice. check it out nice. whenever you get a chance. It was live today. Yeah, they had the Lucky Charms guy on Funko Pop. But they yeah, that was gone. That minutes. was gone in like a couple seconds. I, I, uh. the, they literally put it on the group like I saw three minutes ago. I went on it, and it was gone. It was already sold out, so I had no shot of getting it. Yeah, those Funko guys are hard to get sometimes. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was – I mean, I got, I got the Ninja Turtles one, and I got the uh, – the Freddy Funko, my first ever Freddy Funko, which Freddy was Funko. good. Ooh. So that was good. But um, um, we're here to talk about. I mean, it's, it's always going to talk about pops. Um, but let's talk. We're here to talk about the games. There's a lot of uh, news that have dropped recently on um, games. So let's just get to the first one. So earlier today, um, it leaked yesterday. But let's get that trailer rolling. The uh, Tomb Raider: Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The third game in the reboot of the franchise trailer dropped as Headshot Dan is throwing it up there. Um, September 14th. Uh, interesting teaser trailer. It, it looks very interesting. Um, one for the main reason is that they kind of teased the Mayan temples, which has never been in a Tomb Raider game before. Um, but another game that's coming out during the holiday, September 14th, looks like a very good holiday for 2018. Dan, um, any impressions you might have on that little short teaser? Well, I, you know, uh, actually, I didn't even get to watch it. <laughs> I was too busy setting it up. Uh, but I'm a huge Tomb Raider fan, man. Those games are so much fun, man. Uh, we're going to go see that movie on, on Tuesday, but this game does really look pretty damn good and well, what's your take on it being in the Maya it looks like it's in it look you, as I said you know before the Maya it looks like it's in you see like a Mayan temple so looks very interesting Tomb Raider has never really gone that route before um, how do you feel about that route I'm always up for uh, something new new environments you know like uh, Assassin's Creed was uh, you know the, the e Egypt uh, type style so you now Tomb Raider is kind of following those roots. So I mean, it's it's kind of cool. I, I enjoy it. It looks really good. So that just adds another game to the big list of holiday releases. That one's September 14th. That one's the only confirmed one we know for September right now. Um, I'm sure there'll be more announced at E3. But let's take a look real quick. September we got Tomb Raider. October is a huge month with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. That, um, that was also recently announced. They said they'll have a lot of full trailer in May. And, you know, we know Red Dead is also October. So some big releases uh, coming out so far holiday. That's just three of them. There's definitely going to be more. Um, Battlefield, but Friday, you know. Battlefield as well. We don't know a release date yet, but we do know it's coming out this holiday. So Yeah, it's usually around the, the same time as Call of Duty. Absolutely. October, I mean, it's crazy because Call of Duty normally is a early November release date. It's crazy that it's coming out the week before Red Dead. So October is, the, is a huge month right now. November, we know nothing right now, but huge month. Um, also, another trailer that dropped, uh, the Sega Genesis Collection. 
is on its way to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. We have a trailer as well. That one is about to get thrown up as well. Uh, so far, they tease like a couple games. Of course, we know about Sonic, um, Streets of Rage. Uh, Dan, you grew up in the 90s. Are you excited about this? My first uh, console was Sega Genesis. But uh, it's definitely one of my favorite consoles. So especially Shooter Rage, I fucking love that game, man. Oh, Golden Axe, another game I loved, man. Oh, it's gonna bring yeah, back they so did, many memories. They did tease, and that was uh, Space Harrier. That was a great game as well. I like that game as well. Uh, they did. They teased a lot of great Toe games in this Earl. collection. Ooh, love Toe Jam Real, man. They no, I still got. All... I still got all these games. I still got my original Sega. Ugh. There's a Guardian. Yeah, That's Shinobi. God. That looked like. Yeah, they, they, they really they pretty much tease a lot of great games for this, this Sega Genesis collection. Um, I'm assuming all the Sonics will be there. I wonder how many, if the Golden Axe is all of them or Streets of Rage. I wonder if all of them will be there. But very exciting. I, I love when they do these uh, type of collection games and they release them on all in one disc. Like the Rare Collection was fantastic. I love that. And I mean, this is awesome. I love it. Yeah, me too. I cannot wait, man. May 29th. Uh, how much uh, did they say? Did did they say anything with that? I I don't think they didn't say price yet, but I'm assuming maybe twenty nine ninety nine, thirty nine ninety nine, um, right around that range. Oh, well, that's a pretty damn good price, if anything. Oh man. And I know you were excited about a um. A release date of a certain zombie game. You have some news on that. Um, we both play it, so what's the news on... Oh, it's about some State of Decay too, huh? Your announcement, yes sir. You're the one that, uh, broke the... Broke the news to everyone first. Yeah, so, yeah, State of, State of Decay. Let me tell you, we'll start off with saying that gameplay, that 25 minute gameplay, it looks... Beautiful. Uh, I watched every single second of it, and it looks fabulous. Have you watched the gameplay at, yet at all? I did watch a couple minutes of it. Uh, let's throw up the trailer if you want to throw it up. Uh, you don't have the trailer. I'll get the trailer right now as we talk about it. Uh, but as far as I guess... I watched uh, the four-player co-op gameplay, which looks amazing. I'm fi I'm happy they're finally... The first game was great, but it ha had the lack of online co-op. But now I'm very happy that the second one has a four-player co-op. Yeah, and it's cool because I, I was uh, as I was watching it, you know, the kind of kind of mission you have to do where there's like a hordes of zombies that are coming and if they bite you you get sick and the only way to uh, get the medicine is by uh killing these uh, nests inside of buildings in order to get the medicine that's the only way to get the medicine i thought that was pretty neat uh but this game you know i think it's gonna be the same as number one but probably better and now that it has co-op it's, it's gonna be even better than that uh because this is this the one thing that was missing from number one was co-op man if, the, if number one had co-op it would have been it would have been a masterpiece a masterpiece what i loved about the first game is that this felt almost like a kind of a true um you know zombie game where you're looting uh you have a you have a base camp and you could get other survivors to come to the camp and you had a food supply you had i believe was it medicine um, water and was it elect power as well and weapon? I yeah. know there was like four different um, type of things you had to loot for. That's what I loved about the game and each and then each building had you know you had your hot zone and there was other certain special zombies you kind of had to watch out for as well, which I liked, which was cool. And then you could bring certain people with you. And now yeah, now you have your now your friends can join you, which is which was great. Because the computer AI in the first game, you know, let's face it, wasn't the best, basically. No, it was definitely wasn't. But now we don't have to rely on the AI. I mean, of course, you could play solo, but who would want to play a game like this solo? I mean, this is this is definitely made for co-op, and hopefully, it's. I know you and I are going to be co-op buddies, but who's going to be the other two that are going to join us? And it's cool. There's two different editions. There's the $30 edition, which is of course your regular standard, and then you have the $60 edition, which comes with other, some upgrades and um, everything. Which I'm most, I think I'm debating on getting that one. We're, I, we're probably I played the crap out of the first game, so 
I don't see why I wouldn't play the crap out of the second game. So yeah, for sure, man. I think thirty bucks is a really good price for the game, and this game definitely. I mean, to me, if it was sixty dollars, I think uh, I, I would still buy it. I mean, it definitely has a price tag of sixty. I don't. I don't see why I wouldn't. And uh, the good thing is uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Strand, the founder of Undead Labs, uh, already confirmed that there will be no Michael transactions. Which is fantastic. I mean, because the biggest problem in gaming right now is, you know, of course, the sensitive subject of my, you know, microtransactions. And, you know, you and I discussed this uh, before you went on way of vacation um, of the, you know, are microtransactions ruining video games. But that is it. That, I mean, that's a good announcement to get it right off the bat. That's it. No, no microtransactions in this game. So, you know, it's fantastic news. Man, I really hyped this, this part uh, that we're watching here. These are, these are the, the hyped up. The hyped up zombies and uh, the ones with the red eyes at night they're the ones who could give you the diseases and then if you get the disease inside this house you have to uh, break uh, blow up the the nest and as what i love the, as what I love the about nest, the first game lost. too is that when one character died you could just you know also that was cool too in the first game you switch between you know main characters and if one died you know you obviously you just move on to the next one, which I like too. It was just an ongoing, continuous game, and then of course, I never fully finished it because there was just so much to do in the oh, game. Yeah, there is. And it's I was, ridiculous. I was constantly having to get water because I was always running out of water because my camp grew. I moved on to a different, ba a bigger base, so I had to constantly get water and food. So you're always doing something. You're always, you're not just sitting around doing nothing. You're always doing something. That's what I loved about the game, and I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, the sequel yeah this is definitely gonna be one of those games that i'm gonna be the most hyped about uh for this year i mean there's so many good games coming out but there's only gonna be a, a good amount of quality co-op games and i think this is probably gonna be one of the best co-op games this year and it's a uh xbox exclusive yes it is xbox ex xbox exclusive um gameplay looks like it's about the same as the first game looks like it is tweaked a little bit it does look like it's a little bit more fluent. Um, yeah, the, the UI changed a bit. Yeah. Huh? The UI is a little bit changed. Yeah, and the, I mean, graphically, of course, as you could see, um, definitely has gotten a lot better from the first game. Which will be well. running at 4K. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, lo it looks good. Like I said, it looks like it's a lot better. It doesn't look as glitchy as the first game. I think that was my biggest gripe. Um, there was a lot of hiccups. With the first game, I mean, that comes with the uh, indie title, but, I mean, it was a fantastic indie title, but it looks so very improved. Definitely, um, definitely. Undead Labs definitely has come a long way with the success of the first game. Very hyped about that. So that's really good news coming out of Undead Labs with this game. And it comes out May, I, well, they, what was the release date? Uh, May 22nd. 20, May 22nd. Very May amped up for that game. Now let's go on to... Um, as well, another game that was came out of nowhere that was announced, which was, uh, you know, for the Burnout fans, uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered, um, which launches tomorrow, actually. Um, if you're an EA Access member, you had the 10-hour demo. It's out on um, Xbox and PlayStation 4. Um, I'm a huge Burnout fan. Unfortunately, there's no more Burnout games because that developing team is with EA, and they've been making, unfortunately, bad Need for Speed games. Not the greatest. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how you felt about Burnout Paradise. I thought this was, uh, I thought it was very weak. Um, the weakest one in the series. Um, I know you played the trial. Um, how, did, how did you like Burnout Paradise? Well, playing? Uh, well, well, playing it on the EA Access. No, I tried, I was like, you know what? When it first came out, I wasn't that big of a fan. I just wasn't that big of a fan because it just wasn't that good. So I thought, you know what? 60 FPS, 4K, just want to check it out, see how it looks. I mean, it looks good. It runs really well, but it's, the gameplay is still shit. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just didn't enjoy it. I, you know, I only played for like twenty minutes because I got I got bored of it. So it's the game yeah, I went by. It it took more. It was more of like a street racer. I mean, it still had the cool crashes, but everyone knows Burnout's more for it's you know stunt racing, not you know it's street you know street racing. But the crashes are still there. That's what um, I liked, as any Burnout fan does. But 
it was a very disappointing game. Yeah, it's only forty bucks right now. Yeah, if anyone wants. that's that is what I was about to mention. It is only forty bucks. Not a bad price for a um, remastered game. So it's not the full sixty dollar price tag, which is good. Just a standard forty, which I think most remasters should be. I think it's a rip off. Yeah, which for sixty dollar. Yeah, yeah, access members ten percent. I think it is. Yeah, get ten percent off. So that one's um, on there as well. So uh, that's Burnout Paradise. Um, let's move on to, you know, what Dan and I predominantly play, which is um, Rainbow Six Siege, um, Operation Chimera. Chimera. Um, which kicked off last Tuesday, March 6th. Um, Dan was on vacation, so we couldn't review it that week, so we'll review it this week. So let's kick it off with our our take on Outbreak Mode. So from our understanding, there's only, excuse me, there's only three levels. Um, the one, le two levels I personally finished. I don't know if you finished all of them yet. All of them. Well, you and I personally finished two of them, which was rescuing Jaeger and rescuing uh, Dac Dr. McIntosh. The other one, which was we found the thermite charge. Uh, we completed the first part of it, but the second part we can't seem to get through. Yeah, I beat them all. I definitely want to get the charms, so I definitely want to beat it on uh, Pandemic. <clears throat> We're just going to have yeah. to have a better team than what we do have. Yeah, that's for sure. And especially it has friendly fire. So, I mean, on normal, we pretty much just shot in front of each other, but Pandemic has friendly fire, so that's going to be really interesting. Yeah, but I love, I, you know, I kind of love uh, the new the new type of game, all of that Siege is doing, you know. People were, were saying, you know, it's getting a little bit stale, but then just game mode, take a little break from ranks, uh, take a little break from casual, and then just let loose and destroy some weird-ass looking monster zombies, which is a lot of fun. I like the objectives that it does. I mean, uh, it's a little, I think it's like, uh, I don't know, about 20, 30 minutes per uh, map. It's a little short. There's only three of them, uh, you know, I, I would want, you know, a couple more at least, but, uh, I definitely, definitely really much and very much enjoyed it. I like the shake up too. I like to, I, li I enjoy taking a break from, you know, ranked and also just checking out the operators on this mode, um, rather than just mm -hmm. testing them out on ranked and then someone else has them and you can't choose them. So it was cool to check them out. Um, definitely, again, like you said, taking a break from casual too as well. It's a different game mode. Um, I like the, the the grunts as they're called, and then you have the um, what are the explode the breachers, yeah, the, and then you have the like the tank type monster. What is he called? Oh, uh, it's the uh, hmm. can't even think of a name now. I guess it would be the tank. If we're uh, calling it Life or Dead monsters, because yeah. they're, they're very similar in ways. I'll get the monsters. Oh, but I mean, all in all, at, at, you know, I was playing these missions. We played them on normal. Um, you know, they weren't. It was. It still had its difficult moments. Obviously, when you're, what would you say would be the best operators to choose? I mean, if you want to start, because I have my three. That I think are the best operators uh, to run. I would say, F F F Flika is that her name? Flika, Finka, F F Finka, the one that heals. Uh, I think she would be really good because she can also uh, up you when you're down. So I think she's a pretty good operator. And then we could probably need operators like Doc uh, for health. And, uh, huh, the third one, I really like, uh, I do like Lion. I do like his ability where he can see through walls and all the monsters coming, so I think that could be somewhat of advantage. So I would say Doc, Fika, Lion. I would say, I would say Smoke. Um, you hold the monsters at bay, and if obviously if they're, um, taking out, like, the bomb or the objective, you throw your smoke grenade on there, that tends to clean them out. I do like that. Um, as well, I do agree with you. I think Finca is valuable as well to heal you and juice you up when they're also rushing you as well. So I do like that. Doc is also very useful. So I think we have that just one disagreement. I'd, I'd rather roll with Smoke than uh, so Lion. You're saying the group that we're actually playing in the video right now, Finca, yeah. Doc, and Smoke. Yeah. The only, I mean, Ash is not bad either. Ash is also really good. She has the Ash charges and the flash grenades, um, which also come in handy. 
Um, you know, if the zombies, again, are charging you, throw those flash grenades, that stuns them and holds them back. So Ash is also very useful, and her Ash charges as well. Um, Buck also, I mean, Buck's not bad either. Buck's got the shotgun, so that takes out multiple. He has the hand grenades that holds them back as well, too. So, you know, but as we're playing in the video, yeah, I think that was a good group to run with, uh, Smoke, Doc, and Finca. Yeah, it's great. You know, I like and then how Smoke you... has the impact grenades too, which are very helpful. Yeah, I like how you don't run out of ammo. Running out of ammo is like nearly impossible because there's a lot of ammo bags everywhere. Yeah, I think that changes though. Probably in pandemic, I think pandemic. Um, since I haven't, we haven't tried it yet. I think they probably will. I think they probably tone it down on that. I'm guessing because yeah, the ammo packs are, you know, uh... they're, too, they're mostly they're pretty. Hard, not, I mean, sorry, they're pretty easy to get. I would say, if anything, that the ammo packs will still be there. It was just like the health packs, maybe the uh, the, the ability uh, refills will probably be less, if anything. And I'm and then I'm assuming on pandemic too, you'd want to try to keep it as stealth as possible because on normal we tried to, but I mean, eventually we went guns blazing. So yeah, we didn't even have uh, silencers, which was a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming on Pandemic, you'd want to keep it as quiet as possible going through all the objectives and everything. Ooh, that was my grenade kill. That was beautiful. Yeah. But definitely, Outbreak is uh, an A+, plus in my book. Yeah, Outbreak, I agree with you. It is a very, it's very fun. It gives you, again, a, a break from rank, the stress of ranked. Um, you don't have to play, you don't have to worry about people being sweaty or tryhards. So it's a good break. Casual, it's a break from all the, you know, the, <clears throat> ca you know, casual. Casual is casual. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, it gives you a break. Um, I, I do wish they did have a mode where you could play as the monsters. I think that would have been pretty cool. Like they did with Left 4 Dead where it was like the monsters and the player characters. Yeah, that was fun. Uh. I, I thought that would be pretty interesting. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's a great mode. It's fun. It's The story is well told. Um, and I mean, I just wish there was a little bit more missions. There's only three missions. I just wish there was a little bit more, but hey, I mean, you can't really complain for a free timed add-on. It's it's awesome. Of course, because again, you don't you don't need the season pass for this. Um, this is free to everybody. Question is, after 30 days, what do you think they're gonna do? A different kind of event? Or are they I'm not add sure. Some new maps? I, uh, Ghost Recon. They only did that one event with the Predator. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I wonder if they'll do another event. I'm not sure. Who knows? It depends. Because Rainbow Six, again, is just continuing to get big and big after, you know, the 2015 release. And, I mean, it's gotten better uh, over time. It's on its year three, and we're going to talk about that um, in a second. But, yeah, I wonder, because Ghost Recon, you know, they added PvP later. They added the Predator mode. So, yeah, I mean, that is a good question. You wonder if they're going to add another uh, timed event. Yeah, that'll be really neat. And now let's talk about the uh, the operators themselves. You know, they added two attack operators, uh, which was interesting. And many from the trailers, I felt many people felt that these were going to be very OP. I do tend to disagree. I do have a feeling though Finca will get nerfed, but we'll talk about um, the one that I thought was going to be OP, but really isn't that much OP, and that's a uh, Lion. Lion is one of the new attack operators. Uh, basically, his ability, he has uh, three chances to do it, and the defense gets a timer on their top screen, and so does the offense when it goes through. Basically, he can see you through um, the walls for about, I think, it's like, what, three seconds, five seconds maybe? Yeah, it's like it's like three, 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 three to five seconds in that area, definitely. So basically, to counter that, uh, basically, if he does see you, the entire attack team can see you. It'll be a red, and it'll you know, kind of show you where you're going. And it's for three seconds. And basically, where it kind of becomes OP is if you are a roamer, and let's and lion sees you, he could kind of they could kind of shoot you through a wall or kind of guess where you're heading, you know, just things like that. So as you see him, you know, on the house. He saw that they were peeking the mirror. He kind of peeked around and picked you off. So basically to counter that is you have to stand completely still. Or if you're mute and you're by a mute charge, 
um, you can't be seen through the mutes. As far as vigil, it doesn't matter if you're in your vigil state and you move, he will still see you. And you cannot shoot his drone. Yeah, dude, I, uh, I, I like... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just felt that at first I thought he was going to be very OP, but it's really it's really not that bad. Lion's not as bad as I thought he was going to be. Um, I feel that he is the weakest out of the two. Um, I think, you know, Rainbow Seat, you know, the, kind of what the videos they're showing is very, it's not that terrible, you know? And for the and for the most part, the people so far we've played and ranked, um, they have you know, they'll use them. They'll use the like one people we played and ranked. They used his charges right away. Um, you know, it, it if you're hey if you're a smart lion character, I'm sure you'll use him. But you know, there are people you know he's not used very well. I just think he's the weakest out of the the two characters. Um, he could be countered easily. So he's not he's not as OP as I thought he'd be, you know. Um, now we'll move on to the second operator, which is Finca, who I think is, in my opinion, a game changer. And you and I have come to first hand on seeing how much of a game changer she is, especially when you're, a, you know, rushing the objective or you're rushing a roamer. Um, she is a game changer. Finca basically gives you some. She's kind of like an attacker, uh, like a doc. Um, not only that, she gives you basically an extra health boost for a certain amount of time, and she also um, gives you a recoil boost, so your gun basically pretty much has no recoil on it, and also her gun as well. So I think that one lasts about 10 seconds, right? About like 5, 10 seconds. And... I mean, she's awesome. I mean, she's awesome. I have a feeling she's going to get nerfed um, only because, again, like I said, I do agree that she is a game changer. And you and I have felt that firsthand when it was 2v2. We're rushing the objective. We juiced up and we had no recoil on our guns. And especially if you're a heavy, um, you know, if you're good at peeking, um, especially with head glitching, you have no recoil on your gun, man. And you are going to pick people off, especially if you're Dokabi. And you got, I mean, that gun has no recoil as it is, but you get juiced up as Dokabi, man. And you did juice me up as Dokabi, and I was, you were just ripping people apart. And Ash, no hitbox as it is. Ash is just, just you're just going to destroy people. So, I mean, I do have a feeling she'll get nerfed at some point. I think they'll probably, she has three chances to do it. Uh, my best guess is if they're going to nerf her, they'll probably lower it to two. And they'll probably maybe lower the duration. I mean, what do you think? How do you feel about Finca? I know um, you and I take turns playing her, and you and I seem to play her pretty well. Um, how do you feel? How what do you feel about Finca? And then also, what well, we forgot to mention too for Finca, if you're juiced up as well, Finca does not, the Ella charges, either the duration is quicker, goes away, or you just don't get Ella at all. So that's. But we'll talk about that too with Ella. Ella is completely nerfed. I'm starting to see the ranked games, no one play as Ella as much because her damage um, from a distance now is a lot less. And the recoil on that gun is just, oh my goodness. When they said they were up in that recoil, that recoil is bad. It's bad. And then also, we forgot to mention too, on Finca, which we just saw, um, she could revive herself. Also, if your teammate is down as well, and you juice up, you could revive your teammate. But... 
they, I think they only get about, it's to 25 or 30, and then let's say they don't get killed, um, it, they, their health goes back to one. So... I mean, like I said, she's a big game changer, man. Like, you want to get rid of her as early as possible to avoid. If it's one on two, man, and it's Fink and somebody else, and you and I even did that. We had a two on one. We rushed him. He had stood no chance. So, I mean, I mean, if you're a good player anyway that could hit, shoot headshots, I mean, still, if you're juiced up, instant headshot, you're dead. So, that's aim for the head. That's pretty much all we can say if someone's juiced up on Finca. Aim for the head. But you definitely want to, you know, get rid of her early because she is a game changer. She's a big time game changer, especially if you're heavy people that are tryhards and sweats that, like Dan said, love to rush. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still rolling. I still like Finca, too. I, I mean, I could still roll with any other characters if you're Finca as well. So. It's definitely, it's, like I said, as we talked about when we first previewed Operation Chimera, I felt that both of these characters are going to be way too OP and defense was going to be not impossible, but annoying to play. It's not that bad. Le uh, Leon um, Lion is not that great in my opinion, but Finca is definitely the best character. And I'm assuming next season we're probably going to get two defensive characters since they did um, two off, uh, two attackers, uh, this season. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree with you on some points. That one, I think they do keep the recoil. I think that one might stay on there. I just don't I don't think it'll be as good. Um, but I do agree with you that it'll go down to two. And then I agree with you that I think the duration will be um, slowed down as well, too, because it is long. You are juiced up for a long time. But and I and it, people are going to bitch and threes too much. And they did that with Ella. Ella didn't. And Ella used to have like, what was it four mines? And then also they got rid of her uh, impact grenades. So she only has um, shield and I think barbed wire now. So she has no more impact grenades. But Ella used to be ridiculous. Her, her recoil wasn't that bad. She had impact grenades. She had four mines. And now they're pretty much taking away the playability of Ella because you don't really see it too much anymore. I mean, from our ranked games, uh, Dan, we, don't, we haven't really seen Ella played hard that much anymore. Yeah, I mean, I used Ella too. I, I, I enjoyed Ella, but... The recoil is too much, and her distance from a distance now shooting is rough. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of people complain about her, so, I mean, I, I we'll, we'll see. But, I mean, that's Operation Chimera. So far, uh, what do you think of this season, Dan? Do you, um, have, do you like Operation Chimera? With no new map. They didn't do a new map. Uh, Alright, sorry, I, I unplugged my mic by accident. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Alright, so, uh, this is the first DLC of the, the year. No map, like you said, because they took the map out and decided to do Breakout instead. I think that's it's a, it is a very strong start for uh, this year for Rainbow Six. Uh, two, two great characters. Uh, very much, I can play both of them. Uh, definitely like uh, Finca more. And Breakout is a really good timed event, and I think they did very well. And I think they're going to keep up that momentum throughout this year. I'm really excited to see what, what else we got. I think we got some Italian players coming soon. Woo! Yeah, I, I like Operation Chimera as well. The timed exclusive is fantastic. Well done. It really brought that Left 4 Dead feel back, which was fantastic. I do wish it was a four player co op rather than three, but three makes it um, a little bit more tense, which is cool. Um, I like that a lot. The operators aren't as OP as I thought, which is also fantastic as well. I just wish that, um, excuse me, that they added, they reworked the ranked maps. I really wish they, re they you know, they keep saying that they're going to rework the ranked maps. 
I really wish they would finally do that because some of the maps on ranked are just annoying. And there's constant times where we're playing the same maps either two times in a row, three times in a row. It gets, as much as I do love the game, it gets very stale. I really wish they would, you know, bring, like kind of rework the maps, look, o overlook again. And I really wish they would stop buffing Blitz. Enough is enough. What do they see in Blitz? Stop it. They gave him a two-speed. Stop it. Stop <laughs> buffing him. Leave him alone. He's annoying enough. Yeah, I think mean, I think that was a fucking a mistake, man. How are you gonna make him faster, man? That's so annoying. Yeah, like enough already. Enough. That's that. that those are only my concerns. But hopefully, the ranked pl the the pro players bitch enough and they fix it because that's what Ubisoft really listens to is the the pro players and the you and the YouTubers. But that's Operation Chimera. Dan and I both like it. Um, um, that was great. So, Dan, uh, what else we got? Oh, man. I don't know. You tell me. I tell you. Yeah. What else, what else we got? Well, we got um, Nintendo Direct. Nintendo Direct was also uh, um, last week, and boy, did it live. We'll just get get on with the, the big splash. Uh, Super Smash Brothers is coming to Switch, and it's not next year, ladies and gentlemen. It is 2018, and most people feel that this is a new Smash game. It's not going to be a port from the Wii U version, that this is new. This is a new Smash Brothers game. Dan, how do you feel about that? Well, when I first saw the trailer, uh, the teaser trailer, I had a tear in my eye. And before the As Switch... As did everybody. Did you see the reaction video? I did. Before before the Switch, I was... Uh, I said, look, we need a Super Smash Brothers. That's before the Switch even came out. I was like, we need a Super Smash Brothers for Switch. When, I, when the Switch came out, I was like, we need a Super Smash Brothers for Switch. Uh, I mean... In the, in the back of my mind, I always knew they were going to make one, but I didn't know it was going to be this soon. But I, I think that's it's, it's amazing. I love Super Smash Brothers. I'm ready to whoop some ass in it, like, real bad. About to whoop your ass, Alex's ass, Eddie's ass. You probably will. I'm not that good in that game, so I could care less. <laughs> I'll play it, but I'm really not that good at it. I already know. I'm not a good Smash player. So I'm really excited for Super Smash Bros. Like very excited, and uh, I'm really excited to see what what characters they bring. So I know they're gonna bring some new characters. Well, they the, teased the um for the Splatoon characters are gonna be in it. Yeah, yeah, they um, you know, they said there's there they're gonna be a lot of new surprise characters, which I'm really excited to see uh, which characters are gonna be it. So I'm very excited for Super Smash Brothers. Like super insane excited for Super Smash Brothers. That was that was a huge one. That that's what they ended on um, Nintendo Direct, um, and then we'll talk about the other games. Nintendo again, the biggest issue we always talked about with Nintendo, the past two console generations. Yes, the Wii was uh, a great seller um, because it was you know more catered towards family oriented um, people, um, and then the Wii U, of course, was a complete disaster. It got no third-party support, but third-party support, man, for the Switch is big time right now. Crash Bandicoot is coming to the Switch, but it's also coming to Xbox One as well. So Xbox players and now Nintendo players will finally be able to play the Crash Bandicoot collection, which is 1, 2, and 3, Remaster, uh, Okami HD, and Undertale, which is huge. Um, Dark Souls Amiibo is making its way onto the Switch as well, along with the um, the game coming out, as I talked about, third-party support, uh, which is crazy, a Dark Souls game on the Switch. Um, I'll even get to what's even crazier that's coming to the Switch, which I know Doom was rated M for Mature, but I had no idea Nintendo would go this route, and you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, WarioWare Gold will be out August 3rd. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces which I love the Mario Tennis games, has a release date June 22nd. Which I'll beat that ass into. Let's go. Yep, and I'll kick your ass in that. Let's so I'll be me. excited about that. <laughs> I will bring my Mario kick ass, because I kicked everyone's ass in Mario Kart. 
on to Mario. Uh. <laughs> go and don't say no. Go look at the records. Uh. I have a winning record against everybody except for Salazar. Uh, Salazar cheese. That's why. Yeah, I know because he knew <laughs> he knew the uh, the shortcuts. But if you look, I have a high, I have a good record against everybody else. But um, Detective Pikachu. Yo, Eddie. Um, hello, Eddie. No, Ed, no Giants talking here. You're gonna, you're gonna get your ass. Yeah, Eddie. Him. I'll talk football with you in a second, Eddie. When I get on, when we, when we get into a party in a second. Um, Luigi's Mansion remake is coming to 3DS, the GameCube version, which was a great game. I love Luigi's love Mansion. I'd be, lo- I'd love to play that again. Um, Kirby Star Allies came out, uh, comes out tomorrow, um, which the reviews are pretty high right now. Um, most reviews I see around the eights, eight point fives. And like I said before, um, Nintendo third-party support, South Park, the Fractured Butthole, is coming for the Nintendo Switch. Are you really surprised? I mean, a hardcore rated M game coming to Nintendo Switch? Uh, we really don't see uh, rated mature games on any Nintendo console, really. So this is a big step for Nintendo. They did say they wanted their third-party support, and they're definitely bringing it. Big Especially time. with that game. That game had, you know, with the farts, the F-bombs. Yeah, oh my god, um, the dildos. <laughs> yeah, the dildos. Eddie, man, I can't wait. I'm picking up my PS4 Pro. Got the um, the, next, su- the next Subway month. guy jokes. Uh, what was his name? Jared, oh, the Jared. Jared jokes. Jared, yeah, fucking, um, uh... Oh, man. There were so many awful jokes. And awful yeah. by... Very inappropriate, but very good. <laughs> it's... It's off the chain. I mean, Nintendo, Nintendo's bringing it, man. And then I think I don't know when the next Nintendo Direct is, but I wonder what um, you know, E3's coming up in the next several months, and they're gonna do a Nintendo Direct there. So. Doom, 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 doom. And I felt they won E3 last year too. I mean, E3 I felt was very disappointing for Xbox and PlayStation. Um, I felt Nintendo won E3 next year, so I wonder who's gonna win E3 this. I think E3 is gonna be much better this year, to be honest think, with you. I think that Xbox is taking it this year because you you re, you released the article Phil Spencer said it's gonna be the yeah. the, be, the best E3 they ever had. I hope so. I I, re, I really I really hope that uh, this is the best E3 they've ever had. So I mean Sony I think is gonna bring it too, and I think the Switch can only go i mean nintendo can only go up at this point they they, they've had they've had really good momentum so they can only go up as well so um we're in the month of march now so it's only right that we now i mean this is where some big titles are releasing um january february have been a little light on the titles um march it's about to be some big time so let's run down some titles that uh we're excited about um which was the first one, um, Kirby Star Allies, uh, releases tomorrow. Uh, Burnout Paradise uh, Remaster releases tomorrow. Um, if you're an Assassin's Creed fan and you've never played it because it only came out on 360 at the time, is uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue uh, Remastered. That also releases on March 20th. If you're an Attack on Titan fan, the sequel of the first game releases on the 20th as well. And now here we go for the big title. Um, Xbox One exclusive. Sea of Thieves. Excellent. March 20th. Um, that one I know we're excited for. I played the closed beta. I'm going to be sailing the seas. So we'll be sailing the seas. Can't wait for that one. Um, what are you looking forward to for that game? And did you see their 60 achievements and they're all riddles? Oh, they're all oh, really. They, uh, I uh, they did have a contest. Oh shit! They did have a contest to see uh, achievement contest to see the best riddles and, and crap for achievements. So I mean, I, I think that's pretty cool. I really like that. And so they they announced today that there's 60 achievements and they're all riddles. So yeah, that's, that's it awesome. looks like you might stumble on achievements by accident or unless you know the riddles. I'm really excited to see these uh, sea creatures, man. It's supposed to be some really awesome sea creatures in this game. Like a real I, hope they, I hope they also continue to add on content too as well. I hope they continually add support the game and add content to it. And uh, I think Rare I'm, will do a very good job of support of content. I think I, I'm, I'm like again, they you know, always talked about. I'm happy Rare is finally making a game again, not some you know crappy Connect game that anymore. So I'm happy Rare is finally bit back making to their uh, game making days and not Dance Central. Eddie, why are you saying random games, bro? Uh, yeah, he see, wants us to play PUBG, but I already texted him. Sea of Thieves, man. Siege. Sea of Thieves is going to be a very big game for Xbox. Uh, 
this month. Very big. Yeah, very stoked for that one. After that, um, we have the other game uh, that's the 23rd that's coming out um, in the title that's published by EA, um, A Way Out, uh, which looks fantastic as well. What did you say? It's only it's about eight to nine hours. Yeah, it's about it's, yeah, it's about eight to nine hours long. That's not bad for a thirty dollar game, though. No, it's not, especially if the. You think about it, we used to we used to pay sixty bucks for that amount for that amount too. Yeah, and they and they confirmed that you cannot play solo. You have to play with someone. So I think that's really cool. So I'm really super stoked with that. Yeah, I like that as well. So look out for the co-stream on that one. Um, Detective Pikachu, as I said, that was announced. That one's going to be uh, March 23rd on Nintendo DS. Um, here's a game that you might be interested in, Dan. I know you, I know you like games like this. Uh, Pure Farming. Um, are you, That comes out. Are you excited about that uh, one at all? The yeah, Farmer? I, I pre-ordered the Gold Edition for 100 bucks. Okay. Pure Farming 2018. I, actually, I think that's... Um, and that's Farming Simulator, I think it is. I don't know if that's a different farming yeah, game. I, mean, I don't know, but something I guess similar. I'm gonna I'm gonna grow some motherfucking crops, man. It comes out March 23rd, and hey, then of course other boy. of course the other uh, two big titles at the end of the month, um, Far Cry 5, uh, which looks fantastic. Um, Ubisoft kicking off um, two games coming out that month for them, which is the Assassin's Creed Rogue. Uh, remaster and the far and Far Cry Five. Far very disappointed in Far Cry Four, and also very disappointed in Far Cry Primal. So hopefully they can rebound with Far Cry um, the Donald Trump edition, which we will play. Uh, far, far Cry Five. We'll play. Uh, we'll play that. We'll, we'll co stream that as well. Uh, yeah, we talked about that, Eddie. That one's in May. Can't wait for that. Yeah, we talked about that. I'm fucking super stoked. And then if you're a PlayStation Four owner and you're a big time baseball fan. The yearly uh, baseball game, MLB The Show 18, comes out the 27th as well. Um, I'm a big baseball fan, and I get the games every year, so I'm, of course, looking forward to that as well. So quarter one, March, that's the big month for March. Pretty Besides big CFDs, what and a way out. So those are your top three you're looking forward to, Dan? Uh, Far Cry, a way out, and CFDs, 100%. Definitely my top three. And then, you know, the and, and I mean, other May, I mean, I know we're not that May yet, but boy, May is going to be huge. Yeah, I mean, we get a, we get a little break in uh, April and then May. We, we get hit again pretty big. Unless you get the Nintendo Labo. Are you getting Labo? Labo? Uh, no, probably not. The Nintendo Lab, Labo uh, equipment. I mean, it looks yeah, kind of cool. Month. I mean, it looks kind of cool. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know how much I would actually be sitting there with a with a goddamn piano and playing some <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, as you said, April, like you said, we do get a little break. But boy, boy, I'm looking at the month of May releases, and man, it is just it's constant. I mean, I'll go real quick: Donkey Kong, Hyrule Warriors. If you're gonna get that, Stay of Decay, Mega Man Legacy, um, Detroit Become Human, and Actually, no, I lied in April, Dan. You are getting your God of War PlayStation 4. I am. I am. I, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm getting five games on that list. I'm almost positive. And you're back on the PlayStation market, and you'll be kicking off with uh, God of War. God of War, and then I'm also going to get uh, Detroit Become Human. As, and also, if you want to, they do have it combined. Before Detroit Become Human, they do have Heavy Rain, and they do have Beyond Two Souls released together i think oh, i paid souls. i think it was nice. like 40 bucks well, beyond two you, souls was the game that was the game after uh heavy rain i can tell you i'm definitely getting a donkey kong definitely getting state of decay as you are little nightmares for switch uh and detroit become human and god of war I think those so are you're getting the, so you're getting the playstation 4 is there any other games on your radar would you like me to recommend some for you uh like i said Detroit Become Human. Besides the new games, any like old games you want oh, to pick up? Old and games. Play? I'm def I never played any God of War game, so I definitely might pick up a couple of those God of War games. But besides that, I don't think I have really other interests in other games. Here's the mu here's the must have, and I'll tell you right now what the must haves are. Uncharted. Never played. <laughs> get them all. Just get them all. Get the collection. Get four. Get them all. Um, the Last of Us. 
played it. I beat it. Loved it. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about Infamous? No, I haven't played that. Infamous, you could get that dirt cheap right now. That game pretty much came out at launch. So you get that one dirt cheap. That's a, that's a must-have on PlayStation. And I played Until Dawn. That's it. Oh, Until Dawn was amazing. Did you beat it? No, I, I got to the part where I had to choose her or him, where I cut him in half. Okay. So maybe get that again. It's cheap. But those oh, are the must-haves to get. <laughs> I still got it. Those are the must-haves to get. Just get all the Uncharted. If you like Tomb Raider... I mean, Uncharted is amazing. That's a must-have on PlayStation. All right, sounds good. Those couple of games I guess I'm going to be picking up. <laughs> so, I mean, it gives you a break from Siege, too. Yeah, that's for that's for sure. Uh, well, there's all, there's quite there's so many games coming out. We're definitely going to be probably not be playing Siege as much as we are normally used to. Until a new season comes out. Sorry, Eddie. Or, uh, yeah, new season, pretty much. But uh, I think that covers everything. Ooh. I think that covers everything to go. And um, thank you for the follow, Dr. Mori. I'll uh, thank you on Siege if we play again. Get your damn mic fixed. Um, Eddie, we're about to hop on, so I already told you we're playing Siege. Don't be a square. Yep. And... Um, that was it. Well, we're back. Um, don't forget to uh, follow us on our YouTube. It's right there in the bottom of Dan and Arai's uh, pictures right yeah. there. Follow yeah. us on Twitter as well. And, our mixer and uh, check as well. us out on Spotify. Spotify. Spotify in our mom's basement. Yes, and I am Rage Quit Pat. And uh, we're actually going to continue streaming. We're going to be playing some Rainbow Six Siege, so join us on the co-stream. Um, I am Ray Qu Rage. Look at that. I'm, I can't even speak. I'm Rage Quit Pat. And, uh, headshot down here. All right. Well, see you on.